Hey guys, well, instead of continuing to show you uh, everything in infinite detail like I did in the previous video, I'm just gonna montage quickly through this and do the rest of the ribs. Everything is happening exactly as I did it previously in the previous video. I uh, put a whole bunch of Pro Seal on the inner skin, slide the rib in, put the Clecos in, rivet the Clecos to, and rinse and repeat, right? And all of this is about 11 days, I think. Uh, and it totals about 25 total hours, roughly somewhere around there. Uh, it's not difficult. Uh, again, as with everything in this plane, it's not hard. It's just time consuming and tedious. And I talk about this later, but I, I think uh, this took me a lot longer than it probably should have. I think I started working on the pro sealing of the tank in uh, June, some mid, mid to early June. And here it is mid August and I'm just now starting to get done. And a lot of that is just because I really didn't want to do it. The, I really dreaded working with this. And I think over time as I got used to it and got in there and kind of figured out how to use it, I dreaded it less and less. Uh, so that, that's nice. It, it, it goes faster. Just You just kind of have to accept that you need lots of shop towels, lots of gloves, and the patience to know you're just going to get the crap everywhere. Uh, by the way, whoever it was that suggested the blue shop towels, good call. Those work much better. So other things to take into consideration uh, during this portion of the tank work, you're going to need ways to manipulate uh, aluminum tubing. So there's a vent tube that you'll see here in a bit, and you're going to need a way to cut it. So a miniature tube cutter. Uh, it is a one quarter inch tube. And you're also gonna need a way to bend it. So if you try to just bend it over, uh, it will crimp. And so you need a something that will make nice smooth bends. And they make those, uh, they're fairly inexpensive. The tool that's a little more expensive is the 37 and whatever, uh, like 37.2, whatever degree uh, flaring tool. So you need a way to flare the ends of the tube. Now, thankfully, I, I have a friend right down, uh, a couple hangers down who has one of these tools, so I didn't have to buy it. But uh, you may not be that lucky and you might have to buy one. And uh, I, I don't know how expensive they are, but my first look was they're kind of expensive. The uh, You can get automotive flaring tools. Uh, the problem with automotive flaring tools is they flare to 45 degrees and that they're usually designed for steel. You need one designed for aluminum and it doesn't go all the way to 45. If you, I'm told if you try to use the 45 degree flaring tool, the 45 degree automotive flaring tool, that it will actually cause the aluminum to get too thin. And when it reshapes the aluminum to the actual nut that you screwed onto, uh, it can cause cracking. I don't know if that's true or not. I, it's just what I was told. So you might have to invest in a real honest to goodness flaring tool. The one I used looked like this and cost about a hundred bucks apparently according to the Googles. So sorry about that. Hopefully you'll have a friend that can uh, loan you one. I did have concerns that working with that tubing was going to be a pain, but in all honesty, it really wasn't. Actually, it's really easy to work with. Um, it, you, it's in the instructions, uh, P5 or 5P, whatever section. Uh, it gives you all the information you need to know how to work with it. It's actually really easy to work with. Uh, the only problem I had is when I put the little grommets in the holes uh, inside each of the ribs, I had inadvertently gotten some of the Pro Seal on those holes. And so I kind of had to carve them out a little bit with an exacto knife so that I get the grommets in uh, the tubing itself just pushed right down the center and it was no big deal at all if anything it'll prevent vibration eh, that's, that's what I'm going with anyways so anyways I'm gonna speed this up now and let's get this over with and out of the way and get on to my final comments where I talk about uh, the next steps Basically, though, just to sum up, I'm going to be filling it full of water soon. Yay, leak tests. Uh, leaks are important. we got to make sure we don't have leaks. So that's all coming up here shortly. Well, it's the end of a journey. 
Um, so, uh, what you just watched was me going through and finishing up adding all the Pro Seal, adding all the ribs, and all the rivets exterior uh, to this tank. Uh, for the most part, I, I think I've done a fairly good job. It's a little goopy on the inside. I've done my best to go through and clean off the outside. Uh, a little bit of acetone or brush cleaner and the, any excess stuff on top comes right off. Go real lightly though, don't pour it on, but rather just use a little bit on some on, uh, on a rag or something and, and uh, let, it, let it just wipe off, barely brush it off. You don't want to uh, impervia or you don't want to penetrate into the interior. So you want to make sure you do keep your, keep it clean without destroying the work you've done because having to go back and redo it would suck. Um, but at this point, it's still a little wet. Uh, I'll take some pictures inside and show you here that I've got I've got the tank line, this, this, this tube running through here. It's a ventilation tube. It's running all the way through, as well as the fuel sender uh, you can see right here. So that's, that's good to go. And um, the, the next step is uh, to let it dry. I'm going to give this a couple days to let this uh, Pro Seal that I've got in here set. Then I'm going to take this whole thing, I'm going to put it on the ground, and I'm going to fill it full of water. And um, what some people have suggested is fill it full of water, and if you see no immediate leaks, great, but you're not done yet. Uh, put some food coloring in, and then just put some white paper towels below it, and let it sit for a couple days, and just see if uh, any, any leaks form over time. You never know, right? So, uh, that's, so I'm going to leave the back off of it and then do that leak test first while I still have access to get in here because you never know, right? There might be some rivet that just, for whatever reason, didn't seal correctly. And while I have access to it, I'm gonna do my, my testing and uh, leak prevention now. And then we'll go through and do the final back part. And once you put that on, there's no getting back into this tank. Uh, you basically have to cut a hole to get into it. So this was a hell of a process. It was interesting. Uh, I think the next one will go a lot more quickly because uh, now I know how, you know, I can do it. I can probably do it in a day or two at most. This actually took me weeks. Uh, it took me weeks for a number of reasons. My, I'll, 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 I'll put the exact number of hours on the screen, but my work has been insane. Uh, life has just been crazy. I have not had time. And so that combined with the fact that I just kind of dreaded doing it, really uh, just, it just took forever. Uh, but I, I think now that I know what I'm doing, I'll be able to do the next one uh, a lot more quickly and uh, hopefully get it knocked out real quick. I did uh, ask on the forums if there was somebody who, who uh, I, I had heard a rumor that you could like ship all your tank parts off to somebody and he would do the tank and send them back. Boy, that's that's appealing, <laughs> um, but I, I I probably won't do it just because, uh, you know, like I said before, I, I said I want to build this airplane, and by gum I'm going to build an airplane. So, anyways, um, there you go. The tanks are done. Now it's or this tank is almost done. I guess the hard part's done. Now it's just a matter of you know leak prevention, and then adding the last bit, and then moving on to the next thing. So, cool. <laughs>